Zero. So setting up the classroom library is like my all-time favorite thing to do. And I like to make it as fun as I can for the children. A lot of times teachers go ahead and do all of the work before school starts. But what I really love um, to push for is for teachers to let the children do the work of creating the classroom library. Because the big idea is that we want children in school to become independent thinkers and problem solvers. We want them to have a sense of agency. That means we want them to feel like they belong and that they have choices of what they do in school. And we want them to have a strong self-esteem. And so if you want to develop a sense of agency at a very early age, even in kindergarten and pre-K, children can help create the classroom library. And I can think of no other authentic way to begin to develop that feeling of ownership in a classroom than letting the children help set up the library. So the way I like to do it is I put all my books in boxes and I actually wrap them up like gifts. And I bring a few out at the time. It depends on the class size and how many books I have, that kind of thing. I wrap them in pretty paper and put a ribbon around them. And um, children love it because they come in, I usually do it sometime after lunch, and um, I sneak the boxes out and um, it's kind of like a birthday celebration except for, it's for the whole class. So we sit on the carpet in the community area and I let them take turns opening the boxes and then looking at the books. And it gives me a chance to talk about these books belong to all of us, they are very important, they're class treasures, we want to handle them with care. And so I have all kinds of books. I have um, nonfiction, I have fiction, I have books that you just look at. You might call them a look book, um, non-wordless um, books and magazines, just a great big variety of books. And um, I have books that have levels on them and so that, um, and then I have books that don't have levels on them. And I just put all the books that I have in, in boxes and let the children open them. And so then letting them take turns, pulling the books out, then we have a class discussion. Okay, what do you think this book is about? Well, I see an alphabet on the front. Oh my goodness, this must be um, an alphabet book. And so then as the books come out of the boxes, as a class, we talk about what, where, where do we think those books would go and what do we think it's about? This says alphabet tree. Well, maybe it goes in the alphabet book. Um, oh, this is a Henry and Mudge book. Um, well, we could say it's about a little boy. We could say it's about dogs or we could say it's about friends. And so we can make another category. As we unwrap all the books, the teacher helps guide the discussion of what would we want to call these books? And we want to put them in containers and um, in that are kind of alike. And so the children might say, well, let's put all of these alphabet books, um, all of these in one container. So the teacher would quickly on a sticky note write alphabet books. And then she would take those books and maybe put them in a container. Um, every stack would be done like that. The teacher would guide the discussion though, and books like Henry and Mudge, the teacher might have a whole bunch of these. And so over time, um, instead of just having one Henry and Mudge book, they might have 20 Henry and Mudge books. And so um, the teacher might have a whole tubby that they call Henry and Mudge books. And so any series books um, you might wanna put together. Now, it's also important to have books that are leveled, but I don't mean that it's important for the tubby to say level C books or level F books. It's important to have leveled books, but they don't need to be in a, in a, a level with the label on it. So let's just say this book is about a hermit crab. So maybe this book goes in our book, in our tubby, with, with um, ocean animals. So, or maybe we call it the, um, the fish books or the lake books, something like that. So even though it's a leveled text, it still goes in a category by what it's mainly about. Over time, part of the work that we'll do is we'll teach children how to make good choices, 
how to look at a book and know, oh, this book is too hard for me, or this book is too easy for me, or this book is just right. So we can talk more about that later, but you wanna have a variety of books, including level text, as a part of your classroom library, but you want them categorized by the, by, um, the kind of content that's in the book. Then, the next piece that's important is how you place them in the tubbies. So think about this, when you go to the grocery store, cereal boxes are not on the side so that all you can see stacked up down the aisle is the ingredients. Now we might pull it off the shelf and look at the ingredients, but cereal is sold because of the cover, the, the front of the box. And so we call this front facing. So to make your classroom library very inviting, you want your books to be turned to the front so that children can see, oh, this book is about worms. I would love to know more about worms and how they work. And so it's just like an invitation to open the book. So you would want your books to be forward facing, just like cereal boxes are for the most part. Um, you can typically find tubbies of different sizes. So the smaller books might be in tubbies about this size. Then eventually, after the, the books have been sorted, the teacher has made notes of, on sticky notes of what they want the labels to be. Then after all the work is done on sorting, the teacher types up nice labels or uses a magic marker and writes on labels and then puts the label on the front of the box of the tubbies. So children should know every book in your classroom library. They've helped determine what tubby they go in, what the label is going to be on the front. The last little piece is to make sure they get put back in those tubbies after they read the book. So you need some sort of code. I like to use the color dots and so I just buy the little yellow sticky, uh, the color dots and stick them on the front label um, so that they could see, okay, all of the books about animals have a yellow dot on them and then I put a yellow dot either on the back or the inside. Um, the children help put the dots on the books and they help put the books in the tubby so that when they read the books, they go back into the right place. Uh, you may can, um, you can pull the labels off and do this kind of work every single year and children really own the classroom library. The last thing I wanted to mention is children need a, a place to put the books when they find them. And so you might have little individual browsing boxes that look something like this, or you may just have Ziploc bags, whatever system you find that works for you, depending on the space that you have. But I encourage you to make your classroom library the heartbeat of your classroom and to let your children help sort the books and create the classroom library so that they truly own it.